Well, good morning, Meadowbrook Church. How are we doing this morning? It's good to see you all. A special welcome to all of you who are joining us online. We are so glad that you're with us this morning. So like the video said, we have some special guests who are joining us today. We've been in a series titled, This is Meadowbrook. And what we've been doing with this series is taking a look at our mission statement um, to remind ourselves and to ground ourselves around this is what we as a church are all about. This is what we are called to do. This is who we are called to be. And we've been looking at our mission statement each week. And if you've never seen it before, it's this, that, that Meadowbrook Church exists to invite people to discover Jesus and become his fully devoted followers who influence the world. And so we usually say that there are four words that carry the weight of that statement, and those four words are invite, discover, become, influence. And so each week through this series, we've been looking at one of those specific words and looking at a story from the book of Acts to show how the early church was doing these things from the beginning. We're not necessarily doing anything new as a church. We're just carrying along with what the church has always done and always been about. And one of the things that that we prioritize at Meadowbrook Church when it comes to influencing the world isn't just thinking that in terms of a personal responsibility, even though it is, but one of the things we look to do is partner with other organizations and other individuals who are going out into all the different corners of the world, whether it's locally here in our city or on the other side of the globe, in order to partner with them to recognize that the work that God is doing isn't just here at Meadowbrook Church, but it's everywhere. And it's important for us to have the perspective that God is always at work all over the place. Because sometimes in our day-to-day life, we kind of get tunnel vision, right? We kind of get the blinders on and we, we focus on our own lives. And sometimes we need perspective that God is doing things everywhere. And we have an opportunity as a church to participate in the work of God through these different ministry partners. And so we have four partners who are here today just giving a little update on, on what their ministry is about and what they've seen God do in the recent months. And so I'm going to just jump right in and invite our first partner up, Mrs. Lindsay Holstrom, who's from uh, Brooklink. Um, Brooklink might be familiar to some of you. The, Lee, the name Lee Hayward might be familiar to some of you. He was an interim pastor here, and he started Brooklink. Um, but Lindsay, just tell us a little bit about Brooklink, what Brooklink's about, and, and kind of your role within the organization. Sure. Shout out to Ann Wolfel there. She used to work for Brooklink and mm-hmm. was an integral part in helping Brooklink uh, to grow into what we have today. So thank you so much, Ann. It's good to be here. Thank you so much, Meadowbrook Church, for your prayers and your support. It means the world to us, and it also means the world to all the global partners that we minister to around the world. Um, so you have four words that you were just talking about. So Brooklink has three, which are equip, empower, and release. So those three words have been our sort of our go-to place, our mantra, where we um, await invitations from global partners that we have relationship with. And those global partners ask us, tell us what they need in their own context. So one thing, um, there's a lot of things I really like about serving with Brooklink, but one thing in particular is that we don't go with a mindset of we know what they need and we're going to tell you what we think you need. They tell us that they have needs and we teach in their context of what they're looking for us to to help them with. Mm -hmm. And what are some of the places that Brooklink, like some of the countries where Brooklink has served in the last handful of years? Yeah, so uh, just this past year, we had um, Lee Hayward, um, who is the president and CEO of Brooklink, and some of our other facilitators went to um, Uganda and Rwanda, Southeast Asia. Um, We were scheduled to go to Armenia, but unfortunately had to cancel that. But um, Lee and his wife, Terry, are just coming back from Romania, where they've Mm -hmm. been teaching pastors and their wives um, for the past two weeks. And um, uh, coming up in 2024, we'd appreciate your prayers as we look forward to and And Lord willing, we'll be able to go to Liberia, um, where we're hopefully going to train 125 uh, pastors from all over Western Africa. We're also looking forward to returning to Southeast Asia, as well as returning to Uganda and Rwanda, uh, Singapore, and also a new place where we've never been before is Vietnam. So uh, pray for those uh, partners that we have there and pray for um, our ministry to those uh, disciple-making movement leaders. Yeah, I remember I had a conversation with Lee one time where he said, like, we take for granted the training and the education that we get here. And he said, you know, for every, like, so many hundreds of pastors here in the States, there's access to training. And he said that same ratio is like for every pastor here, there's like, you know, 
14,000 or something. Just ridiculous. Like the need in other parts of the world for biblical training. Um, and it's just really encouraging to know that he's kind of devoting his life along with other people to do it. So how, how would you, um, what, what would be a story of kind of what Lee has seen in terms of the work that he's doing that captures kind of the the mission of Brooklyn? Yeah, that's a great question because we hear so many. And um, if you if you don't know Lee Hayward, if you ever get a chance to talk with him, he is a walking storybook. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he loves to share stories. So I'll just, you're all nodding your heads because you know Lee. Um, but yeah, Lee just uh, saw the need greatly for um, training for uh, pastors and um, leaders overseas, so that's why he felt God was leading him to start Brooklink. But this past year, when he was in Rwanda, he um, a couple stories. One was he he met several pastors, obviously, but one in particular was uh, Pastor Nathan. And Pastor Nathan was a child uh, during the Rwandan genocide, and um, he just was, he said, I just felt like the book of Acts came alive for me through your training and through your teaching. And so, so Lee will um, train and teach a certain topic or a book. And then while he's teaching it, he's actually training them to teach it to their flocks. And so there's a twofold purpose there. When Lee is training, he's also being an example of what they can do too. So Nathan just said that the book of Acts came alive for him. And um, the other thing that I also really appreciate about Brooklink are our trainers. Um, many of them are former missionaries and pastors. And so they come with a lot of head knowledge with big hearts, um, but they also come with postures of humility. And what they come away with is seeing um, that they offer a lot of knowledge, which is great because that's what our partners are asking us to do is to train them. But also they, um, it's kind of a reciprocal arrangement in a way because when Lee was in Rwanda, he was greatly moved by the reality of people surviving a genocide and how the church has really come together um, in response to this um, in a way that most people don't have to, fortunately. But um, he saw Hutus and Tutsis worshiping God together, Mm. being married together, living under the same roofs, and and, to, and Lee was really moved um, just to see that in action. So, so they learn about their context. They learn how they apply God's word, even if they don't really know how to teach it like mm-hmm. we do here in America. So Brooklyn has a, a unique role in the world, and we really appreciate how much you love on us, how much you pray for us, how much you support us. And um, Lord willing, we'll be able to keep doing that in the next several years. Yeah. And so how can our church be praying for Brooklyn in the year ahead? So we do have some plans uh, to go to several countries in 2024, but we also receive invitations, um, and we have to flex a little bit. Like, we had to flex about Armenia not being able to go there this fall because of their uh, conflicts. So uh, pray for wisdom. If, you know, other countries invite us, pray that we have discernment to know when to accept those invitations. And as we do look forward, um, we are going to be celebrating our 15th anniversary Mm. this year in 2024, which we're very thankful for. Um, But we also feel that God is calling us to continue this ministry. So pray for the continuation of Brooklink. Um, Pray that we would be creative and receptive to what God has in store for us. Yeah, that's great. So I'm going to invite Jesse Culp, who's one of the members of our missions team. It was the mission team that organized getting all these mission partners here today. And so after each one shares, we're just going to invite one of the missions members to come up and pray for them. So go ahead, Jesse. Father, thank you for Brooklyn. Thank you for your faithful ministry partnering with them. I would say you would pour out wisdom and discernment on them as they decide where to go in the upcoming future. Also ask that you would equip the leaders globally of your church and that you would continue to grow them and shepherd them well. Uh, I ask that you would raise new partners for Brooklyn, that they may continue forth with the ministry financially and with prayers. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Can you guys join me in saying thank you to Brooklyn for being here? And at this time, I'm going to invite... Michelle Willie to come on up front from Hope Street, which is located here in our city at 26th and Capitol, and she's going to come and share a little bit about the ministry there. So we're glad that you're here. Thanks. Yeah. Happy to be here. So could you just tell us a little bit about Hope Street and kind of what you do within the organization? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my name is Michelle Willie, and I serve on the staff at Hope Street Ministry. I got connected about four years ago. I was looking for a place to serve, and I didn't know what that was going to look like. And I threw a lot of prayer and just um, releasing things off of my schedule so that there was space for something. 
I just asked God to place something in my life that um, he had a bigger plan for. And I got connected to, at Hope Street as a volunteer. I showed up for a serve Saturday. And uh, I went home that day and said to my husband, I don't know how, but I need to work there. That place is amazing. There, it doesn't make sense with my life plan, but I got to be there. And so I showed up over and over as a volunteer. After about two years, they asked me to come on staff, which still doesn't really make sense with my life plan, but I work part-time, and it's been transformational for me. Um, but also, I've just been able to walk alongside others whose lives are being transformed, and ultimately, at the end of each day, I'm the one who is feeling blessed uh, by all the relationships at Hope Street. So that's kind of my story. My role has transitioned a lot. I started as an ex as the executive assistant, which I like to call the professional helper, uh, because I don't necessarily feel qualified to be in that position, but I certainly feel called to be there. So I have learned a lot, and I'm helping a lot with the administrative side of things, and I help plan events for Hope Street. I am in charge of all sorts of donation. If you ever re receive a thank you letter, that's probably coming from me. Um, but um, my role is transitioning now where I'll get to be a little bit more of spending time with our members and helping staff feel supported, loved, and encouraged. Yeah. So Hope Street is the greenhouse for people. We're located on 26th and Capitol here in Milwaukee. We function as two facilities right now, but both under the umbrella of Hope Street. So we have homes at Hope Street, which has been around for this year. This upcoming year will be 25 years. Homes at Hope Street is a transitional living facility. So we have men, women, and children who all live in our facility. We have 22 apartments that are there. And um, then last August, we extended that out into a community center. So directly next to Hope Street, we have uh, Shechem, which is our community center. So our uh, Executive Director Ashley had kind of dreamed into how do we take what's happening inside of Hope Street and extend it out to the greater community because uh, we li Hope Street Homes is a protected facility. So we don't necessarily invite the outside community completely into that as that's where people live. So we thought, how do we take what we're doing here and expand it? And that meant a new building. So mm -hmm. we have a community center that has a gym, a few classrooms in it, a cafe, uh, a resource center, and an outdoor patio rooftop area. And that is then open to anybody who's living in the community. We have memberships in both locations. So those look a little bit different if you're living at Hope Street versus if you're just attending um, to Shechem in the community center. And in both spaces, we try to live out our three vision, which is uh, cultivating hope, building community and protection. So it looks a little di bit different in both spaces, um, but God continues to provide opportunities and ways that we can live that out. Yeah. And what, what have you seen take place, especially with Shechem, now that you've kind of opened up this community center? What's something that you've seen kind of surface as God being at work? Yeah. So, um, Something that we say at Hope Street it, for volunteers, because it can feel intimidating to show up to a place you don't know, we say, please just show up. <laughs> and that could look really different for each person because we're all created so unique and so different. So uh, one of my favorite stories to share is about a volunteer who is related to somebody <laughs> here, um, <laughs> which I didn't know that coming in, but uh, she showed up about a year ago. She said, I'm not sure why I'm here, but I know that I'm, I'm interested in being here, and I don't know what that's going to look like. And so as staff, we just continued to encourage her, please just keep showing up. Please be a familiar face to our members. Please be an encourager to our staff and to our other volunteers. And so she did just that. And we um, had a lot of conversation around what is that going to look like over, over several months. Um, we encouraged her, you know, maybe you want to do like a craft time with the high schoolers at Shechem. And she was like, uh... No, I'm not, I'm not real crafty. And I kept throwing, you know, this is where I've learned, you know, I kept throwing out like, hey, try this, try this, try this. And she was stuck to saying like, no, that's not for me. I want to see what God has for me. And eventually one day she showed up and she said, I'm going to have a tea party here. And 
we were as staff kind of like, what? What do, you, what do you mean a tea party? Because we have an after school programming at Shechem. So from 3 to 5 p.m., we have about 50 to 75 high schoolers that walk down the street. Uh, they go to school at Howard Fuller High School and they come on down. And um, so we had this tea party and, and she showed up and had her fine china mm -hmm. tea set. She sets out a placement or a, a tablecloth. Everybody has their own tea set. And um, initially it was kind of a little bit of like, oh, come on, like, come on kids, join this tea party. And she would say, put your phones away. We're just going to have conversation and be in community together. And um, over the months, it's just transformed so much into an event that our high schoolers show up for. And they're like, where's the tea lady? Is mm -hmm. the tea lady coming today? Many of them know her names. They all give her hugs. They help her carry in her tea and her pastries from the car. And um, she has a heart for sharing about Jesus. And she said many times, I just want to be able to talk to them about Jesus, but it doesn't feel easy or it doesn't feel right. So she talks about things like relationships and hope and um, forgiveness. Talks about all of those hard things and allows the high schoolers to just express themselves and then she pours love back into them. Recently, she asked me to come in the room into the tea party and said, hey, Michelle, uh, these kids have been asking, like, what is Shechem? Like, what does Shechem mean? Why does Hope Street exist? They've been coming here and hanging out for a year and don't even really get the big picture. And so that was an opportunity for the first time I got to share with the kids about Jesus. And I got to share with the vision or the story of Jesus meeting the woman at the well and how she shows up in all of her messiness and brokenness. And Jesus said, that's okay. I love you. Come on. Part of my family. I'm inviting you in. And I got to relay that to the kids. That's exactly what we get to do with you guys every single day. You guys show up all messy and broken just like us. And we say, come on, come back, mm -hmm. sit down, have tea with us, play in the gym, come to the cafe, whatever it looks like, just come so we can love you and they can experience Christ's love that way. Yeah, that's great. That's great. At this time, I'm going to invite Aldo, who's part of our missions team, uh, to pray over Hope Street and just to pray for the ministry there. So thank you so much for being here today. Dear Lord, thank you for the opportunity to have these people in today to learn more about the great things that are happening um, in the ministry close to our homes. We pray for Hope Street. We pray for the staff, the residents, the students there. Please, Lord, protect them, um, both physically and emotionally. Um, we live in a broken world, and we just want them to feel safe mm -hmm. in your love. Also help the volunteers and the staff feel refreshed when they come in. Um, they have to deal with a lot of difficult conversations, and please allow them to show the people there your love. We also pray for the residents there, especially coming up with the holidays. Mm -hmm. May you give them an opportunity to rest and connect and show them the great gift that you brought us all. Thank you again for the opportunity to have some place close that we can come and serve and um, bless this ministry. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thanks, Michelle. Thanks, Aldo. Join me in just saying thank you to Hope Street. So uh, this is Mike and Trisha Goddard, and uh, they've been connected to Meadowbrook for a very long time. Uh, Trisha, you grew up here at this church, and so somebody reminded me that I needed to say that in between services, um, that you have been here from almost the beginning. And so you guys, uh, tell us a little bit about the ministry that, that you lead. Thank you, Pastor Brian, and also thank you, Meadowbrook Church, for creating the space for us to be able to connect and share a little bit about what God's doing in our hearts, our lives. Um, we are a part of an organization called Partners, and our goal really is to see each and every one that the Lord puts us in contact with to thrive in their ministry, that the life of Christ that we have in us uh, flow, flow through us into ministry, into outreach, into uh, being on mission and on par with Christ and what he wants to see accomplished on earth. So what we do is we fill in the gaps in any way we can. 
uh, uh, through conversation, relationship, people will come to us and ask us uh, uh, questions. How can we be more engaged in, in cross-cultural ministry and to, to, do, to do our ministry better? And so we'll, we'll find ways of coaching, mentoring mm -hmm. uh, people into that uh, uh, to be successful, really, mm -hmm. in what God's called yeah. them to do. Now, for a while, you guys were located specifically in Paraguay, doing ministry in Paraguay, but now you're expanding that, right, to other parts of Ab the globe. Yes, absolutely. We were living in Asuncion, Paraguay, and we transitioned to Florida, Central Florida, in order to expand our ministry. Or we've seen the Lord expand our ministry globally as well to to take what what we saw happening in Paraguay and 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 take that on a larger scale by yeah. God's grace. And how are you seeing that actually play out? Share a story with us of how you're seeing God expand and do new things. So two quick stories. One of the one of the things that we saw happening in Paraguay is uh, uh, one of the native indigenous uh, pastors and leaders who had this heartbeat to reach uh, the villages that were in his community. And there are a hundred, hundred villages that he wanted to see church, uh, churches planted in or Christ followers. And so uh, he shared this vision with us and with uh, multiple partners. And, and throughout the years, he's been able to see um, have that goal come to fruition, or at least a, a part of it. We, when we visited just recently this year to Paraguay, uh, out of the hundred churches that they have planned to plant, and by 2025, they they were on about number 46, 47. And he's he's trying to figure out exactly how many were there, and so we see this this fervor just carried out in a practical way mm -hmm. locally. Another thing is uh, in the expansion realm, uh, is, is the Lord gave us an opportunity in. 2018 to visit uh, Buenos Aires, Argentina, and and speak in some churches there. While we were there, this young couple were our hosts. They received us into their home, a very humble area of town, and and we had our vehicle, our family uh, all together. We stayed in their home. We tried to pull it into the yard. We had about an inch on one side, an inch on the other side from the, and and, and they were just apologizing the whole time, you know, having these Americans in our home, you know, and and just not being able to provide the adequate uh, space for us, uh, or so they felt. Uh, mm -hmm. We 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 were just happy with the relationship and the a nice you know, warm bed to sleep in, and, uh, having time together, fellowship, drinking the, the, the Latin American mate. It's a hot tea. Uh, so tea is good, by the mm -hmm. way. And uh, <laughs> so drinking tea together, it, it just developed into a nice relationship. Just recently, um, while they, they shared with us their heartbeat to go overseas, and into a very difficult area of the world, of the Middle East specifically. Mm -hmm. uh, I won't name the country. Uh, however, uh, their church finally this year said, it's time for you to go. And uh, they have two small children. Uh, through our ministry, through our connections, uh, we made the purchase for the tickets. And these are expensive things that they've saved up for for years uh, to purchase these tickets. And, and uh, it sounds like a small and simple task. But for Argentines at this point in time with inflation and, and governmental restrictions, it is a very difficult task to use U.S. dollars to buy international mm. tickets. So we, we come and we help find practical ways of helping. Uh, just recently, that door closed. And they they were, they were encouraged to change their their ministry direction to northern Africa, and so that's that's happening next week. They're mm -hmm. flying, and so these are just ways that we get involved, add value to their lives, their their ministries, and help out in any practical way we can. That's great. So how can we be praying for you guys in the the months ahead? Yeah, as Mike was mentioning, we come alongside the Hispanic community, adding value to their lives, creating uh, services that they need, and just be in prayer that we have other ministry partners come alongside us and join our team in that, because a lot of times there's people that need help and we can't do it, but we look for others that can, and so just be in prayer for that specifically. That's great. So I'm going to invite Zach Krause, who's also on our missions team, to come up and pray for the Goddards. Um, and after service, all the mission partners will be out in the lobby, and you guys can talk to them and say hi to them and just learn a little bit more about what they're doing and how you can stay connected. Uh, dear God, just, I want to thank you um, for the Goddards here. That, uh, thank you for protecting them this year, um, and thank you for um, all, the, all the work that they, they have done um, in your name. I just pray that uh, you would give them the resources and uh, the strength to continue on serving all these people 
um, all, all throughout Paraguay and uh, South America. I just pray that um, all the people that they minister to would feel empowered and encouraged, um, that you would um, provide for them um, everything that they need. And I just thank you for all that you do um, for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Join me in just saying thank you to the Goddards for being here. And now I'm going to invite uh, Laura and Billy Borkenhagen, who also used to attend church here, and they're going to share a little bit about the ministry where they serve and kind of what they do within that ministry. Yeah, so um, we were in Tosa for many years and attended here, and about three years ago, we relocated um, and joined the, the ministry at Fort Wilderness. It is a camp in northern Wisconsin, so we're about four hours north of here. Um, and the way that, that Fort um, ministers and, and impacts lives is, is through four things. They, they really get people into creation, and so come on up. It's beautiful. Uh, lots of opportunity to just be in God's creation. And, um, and then they minister through, through adventure and just trying new things. Um, and the third way is God's word. So no matter what camp you're at, uh, there's a speaker. Brian has spoke. Uh, mm -hmm. Billy spoke. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you're, they're hearing God's word. And then the fourth way is through community. And so the staff and, and just kind of like the micro community that takes place of, of being at camp together. Um, and, and so through that, um, Fort is ministering to oftentimes it, it is Christians that are coming up uh, primarily at family camp. Christians come, and, and so the fruit that we see from that is um, we hear people saying, I, I left rested and rejuvenated, or I've recommitted my life to Christ by taking a whole week um, to be in God's creation and hearing his word every day and being in community. Um, and then there's, there's new believers, um, whether a, a friend brings you to camp or um, oftentimes at the youth camps, uh, well, people will meet Jesus for the first time. Or, um, you know, my personal story and, and, and many is, is like you, you grew up learning about the Lord from your parents, but it's your first time at a youth camp away from your parents for a whole week that you decide for yourself mm -hmm. that Jesus is your Savior. Um, so that's where we're seeing, seeing fruit at, at uh, Fort Wilderness. And where it's a year-round camp, so we have family camps um, all summer long. And then in the fall, there's adult retreats. And in the winter, there's a few family weekends, and then um, youth groups come up, mm -hmm. Meadowbrook included. Um, our specific roles, Billy's an architect, so he is designing. Uh, there's some new building, lots of new, new things happening at Fort, and so he's leading that, and, and I work part-time in the marketing department. Um, but beyond our, our desk jobs, all the staff at Fort uh, gets the privilege of spending time with campers. So in the summertime, our, our family cooks a a pancake breakfast. Mm -hmm. It was good, right? It's pretty good, yeah. 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 <laughs> and um, we were given the opportunity to lead devotionals, um, speak at speak, and, and just be with, with the yeah. campers. Yeah. So yeah. share a story with us about some of those interactions that you have when it comes to spending time with campers. Yeah, there, there's some of our favorite moments, because even with our desk jobs, there's a lot of ways where God provides, and you can see it, and it's really, it's really cool. But sometimes those moments where we get to interact with people are the most powerful ones. And so I was, a story on that, I was asked this summer to share my life story or testimony with the campers. And that's something we do at Fort. The youth do it, the staff does it. But when you're done with it sometimes, you're thinking, I have no idea if that was helpful for anyone, you know? So I was kind of feeling that way one day. And later in the day, I was walking back to my office to do some some more architecting, and on, on my way, there was this kid who um, saw me, and he's like, hey, are you the guy who talked earlier? I was like, yeah, I was. And as a part of my story, I shared that when I was 11 or 12, I went through a season of doubting God. I'd, I just wasn't, I had all these questions. I wasn't sure if he was real, and um, it was a for very um, trying season in my life, but it formed my faith in a lot of ways. And so he came up to me, and he said, so how did you ever figure out God is real? And um, so we just sat down on this bench and talked for a while about um, Jesus and about, you know, how you can know he's real. And um, it, was an, it was really powerful, but at the same time really quiet because no one would ever know that conversation happened. And so we see that a lot. The ministry is just making space for people to think about things that they're probably processing in their head, but they just sometimes don't take the time to 
to give serious thought and verbalize it. Yeah, as somebody who's spoken at Fort Wilderness, sometimes you think it's the speaker who's going to come in and make the biggest impact, but what you don't see is that it's the individuals coming back year after year after year who are making connections with the staff from one year to the next, and sometimes it's the staff, oftentimes it's the staff who has a bigger impact, and it's really great to see like there's space for those conversations. Yeah. So how can we be praying for you guys in the year ahead? Yeah, so we have two prayer requests. One, um, I think, is a prayer, and it can be prayed for all the, the missionaries here today and, and for Meadowbrook. Um, in John 15, it's the, the Jesus is the vine and, and we're the branches. And so just prayer that we stay connected to Jesus. And um, verse 8, it says, By this my Father is glorified, um, that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. And that's, that's uh, a prayer that we'd love you be praying for our, our marriage and, and for Fort and that we just stay connected to Jesus, that we would bear much fruit and be his disciples. And the second prayer request is, um, my, my dad has been, um, he's nearing end of life, and um, it's both a praise, just that it has been the most beautiful year and a half of mm -hmm. knowing that, mm -hmm. and, and just like praise God that I know where he's going and, mm -hmm. and the life change in him. Um, but this upcoming season, we're, we're like already sensing the challenge mm -hmm. with our kids and supporting my mom. And I can just, we just feel this heaviness coming. Yep. Yeah. Um, so we'd love prayer for that. For sure. So I'm going to invite uh, Ellie Skorczewski, who's also a member of our missions team, who's going to come um, and pray for the Borg and Higgins. Laura, I'll take the other half of your marketing job. Send your kids to Fort, especially your uh, young kids and your high school and college age kids. I was up there, and it's a, just a neat experience. So let's pray for you. Father, thank you for Billy and Laura and Craig and Tina Holmquist and the work that they do up at Fort God. We pray that the staff would be rooted in you, um, that they would uh, seek their strength um, from you and their words from you. Father, we pray that you would bind them together up as a staff so that they can pour themselves out to the campers that come up. Um, to hear about you. We pray for um, Laura's dad, that he would finish his race well. We pray that as a family, they can grieve well together. God, thank you for this time that they've had with him. Um, thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Join me in just saying thank you to the Borkenhagens, too. So as, as we kind of bring this series to a close, I want to give two challenges to our church as we kind of step into the holiday season. One, um, we said it in our announcement video, you're going to see an image like, like this around the, the building. Um, we have families in need in our community who could use presents this holiday season. And so on our website, you can find this image as well as there's a QR code on these images and these posters around the building. If you scan that QR code, it will take you to a list where you can sign up to provide gifts for a child this season. It's one simple way that we as a church can share the love of Jesus with families in need who, who live not that far from us. And then also, we said at the beginning of the series, or like our mission statement is to invite people. And so what does it mean for us as a church to invite people? One level, you can invite people to church, which is great, but we also want to invite people to discover Jesus. And as we step into this next uh, month, as we step into December and January, we're going to start a series in the Gospel of John, just working through the Gospel of John. And so we wanted to make available little copies of the Gospel of John that you could take. You can take them from the Connection Center, and you could be thinking, who's an individual that I can be praying for? that I can be praying for and give this to and just ask them the simple question, hey, have you ever discovered Jesus or do you know anything about him? And you can say, hey, our church is working through this series and we'd love for you to participate. And maybe that seems overwhelming. Maybe that seems intimidating. But I would say encourage them not even to like read the whole thing if that seems overwhelming to them, but read like the first four chapters. Because in the first four chapters, like Jesus is revealed. In chapter two, like he provides wine to keep a party going. He has this undercover secret conversation with a religious leader. He meets a woman who's an outcast at a local well and just dis like shares the love of God to them in ways that changes their lives. And if you say, read this, and give them the simple question, what is it that you think of Jesus? As you read through those first few stories about him, if, if you could sit down and have a cup of coffee with Jesus, like what would you ask him? What do you think about him? It's not about inviting people to our church as much as it is inviting people to discover him. And so we'd love for you to think about who's somebody in your life 
who you could invite to discover Jesus and say, hey, as we go through, as our church, as we go into this next year, we're going to be studying this book and we'd love for you to join us. So I'm going to invite the worship team to come back up. Um, And even now, I'm just going to pray for us, be thinking and call to mind, who's somebody who I could invite to discover Jesus in the year ahead? Lord, we just thank you so much for all the ways that you are at work in the world, whether it's at Hope Street, uh, through Brooklink, through Partners, in Fort Wilderness. Lord, we recognize that you are constantly at work. You are constantly calling people to yourself. And as part of Meadowbrook Church, Lord, I pray that we would participate with you in that same work. And so we just say thank you for all the ways that you have been at work in our lives and all the ways you've been at work in and through our church. And we just pray that in the year to come, we would be able to see more of that and have more stories to tell of all the wonderful things you have done. We pray this in your good and gracious name. Amen.